This week's show is sponsored by Wellness Core. Can you close your eyes and picture your favourite toy from when you were a child? That ability to visualise a memory is a powerful tool we take for granted. Some humans can't visualise mental images at all. But what about dogs? Can they picture their favourite toy from when they were a puppy? How about other types of memory? Episodic, like how you remember your day, playing back, taking your dog for a walk, like a video in your own head. Semantics, the facts you know about things, like dogs and mammals. And then there's non-declarative memory, the stuff you don't need to think about, you just do it, like riding a bike. You're not saying dogs know how to ride a bike, are you? Do they reminisce about their puppyhood? Or do they live in the moment? Welcome to The Dog Scholar. Do dogs remember in pictures just like we can? Well, I found a study that looked at exactly that. There were 28 dogs in Japan that took part in the study. Scientists played a sound recording of either their owner or a stranger's voice, and it was followed by a single photo, and it either matched the voice that they heard or didn't. And they recorded the length of time the dogs looked at each face, and they found the dogs looked longer at the faces that mismatched with the voice they just heard. Now. If dogs were remembering the person as a picture when they're hearing the voice, you'd expect them to look longer at the mismatched image because it wasn't what they were expected. So this was actually the first demonstration that non-human animals can remember in pictures. So they looked longer at the faces that didn't match. Mm, that makes sense, wouldn't it? I mean, from an evolutionary standpoint, you'd want to pay attention to the unknown a little bit more than the known, wouldn't you? Yeah, that would be my thing as well. You know, you want to make the idea of living in this world, you want to be able to predict and control mm, outcomes yeah. and events, don't you? So anything that disconfirms that, that says, well, hang on a minute, you shouldn't be speaking like that. You know, if your partner suddenly walked in speaking like Daffy Duck or something, you'd think, well, what are you speaking like that for? Whereas if they walked in speaking normally, then you'd pay attention <laughs> to it. And I should imagine that I should imagine <laughs> that, that is equally valuable to... Your dog, you know, yeah. I mean, people could try it, couldn't they? To try speaking to your dog in some sort of weird voice and see what they do. See if they look at you puzzled, you know, as though there's, there's you know, there's something wrong with you. I might do that when I get home and just see what my, what, what the what the humans around me do. Yeah, you're right, yeah. lad, what are you doing, lad? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. yeah. But it's, what I liked about this is it showed that whatever they were recalling to go, oh, that doesn't quite match, it was recalling it in a picture because they were remembering the face. I think it says something about how dogs experience the world. Because I'm really guilty sometimes of just, obviously with a behaviorism background, it's like reductionist black and white response outcome. And sometimes I know that I can kind of ignore some of this stuff, but actually it showed me that there is more to it than I, I might be giving well, you credit for. I'm a, I'm a big advocate of uh, what, what I coin as allowing your dog to see the world but perceive it as only in the background and going off that you know if they're more likely to fixate on things that are unfamiliar obviously whether like whether they're working it out or from an evolutionary standpoint it's like to risk assess the amount of reactivity I deal with like fear reactivity and it all stems from us allowing our dogs to fixate and, and go down that rabbit hole of oh and then before you know it they have to make a choice to you know to better that situation and I literally always start these behavior change programs with the dog needs to see it but only perceive it as in the background if you've if your dog has you know a, a fear of traffic and you start at a distance away walking your dog but keeping them focused on something traffic passes by and they just accept it a bit better. It becomes the, the information that they might be suspicious of or scared of. It becomes much more easier to digest. So, you know, that would that would um, fall in line with what they found, wouldn't it? And if they can remember in a picture, that's yeah. kind of like the foundation for how you yeah. would make a category of something, how you'd recognise something yeah. else. If, I, if that were my study, I'd think I'm going to push this one step further. Yeah. I'm going to show you a picture of your favourite beach where you go for a walk or your favourite park. And I'm, instead, I'm going to play road traffic noise or I'm going to play Ooh. a children's playground over the top Ooh. of it and oh, yeah. see if I get the same level of confusion yeah. and mismatch there oh, that I would yeah I wonder if yeah. dogs can remember and smells it is their primary scent after all there's all sorts of things that you could throw in there isn't there yeah. to be able or, to see what you know how does this affect yeah. it or even put you... it from the, the the behavioral example I give maybe match a, a you know a smell that they really like with that, that picture that they might be a bit suspicious of, yeah. would that snap them out of it? Or you could do like a smell of a particular person, yeah. their, their owner, with an unfamiliar yeah. face and see if that would trigger Yeah, but there is something there about activating that seeking system, yeah. isn't there, that, that puts them in that zone of, um, I'm not really paying attention to this, now my nose has taken over. Yeah. Like Temple Grandin wrote a brilliant book, which I believe was um, Thinking in Pictures. I think that was the title of it. Or if not, if you Google Temple Grandin. I can't picture it. I, I, can't I can't picture it. Yeah. <laughs> I just think it's ironic yeah. that you I've can't got it. Remember. I can see it. It's it, it's like I can I can recall the picture 
to mine. Yeah. <laughs> you see, yeah. it, it's, it's a sort of like brownie sort of colouring yeah. on the back. Of, good, it's it's a good book. Good yeah. book for people to have a read of that, that goes through the whole that sort of like picture thinking as yeah, opposed yeah. to uh, and links in directly to her own, I believe, autism. Well, you know, I, and how okay. she he, she perceives perceives things, which is how she was able to bring the two in together and oh, match wow. the two to sort of like revolutionise the American beef industry. Nice. Ooh. Well, of course, in humans, emotion can trigger you to have a much more vivid memory. Mm. Um, and it would be interesting to know if it's the same with dogs. I would suspect yes from behaviour that I've observed, but I haven't mm. found a study. I, I, I would, um, from obviously it's anecdotal with through experience, but I would absolutely say that is relevant. If there's an outcome linked to that picture, i.e. something, you know, not nice happens or something better their situation something nice happens the dog's more likely to remember it as a, a as a learning event aren't yeah it? i mean wh why, why would you have the ability to be able to find things more pleasant or more unpleasant if there weren't yeah. a, linked a link to it yeah benefit to yeah. that you know so yeah I, d I definitely think that the more emotionally arousing mm. something is you yeah. know in what whatever yeah. capacity the more impact it has on memory yeah. i think in, in terms of in terms of like teaching your dog things and 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 wanting to you know engage with your dog it, uh, we, we've mentioned this before, but, you know, it all boils down to seeing the world with three things in mind. Avoid discomfort, indulge in pleasure and better your own situation. They're the kind of things that, that that's going to shape your dog's behaviour as you're, you know, wallowing through life. Yeah, good job they don't have to worry about things like morality as yeah. well. Or, or <laughs> tax. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't get me started. There's some fantastic yeah. things coming out here so the people who are listening remember it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, we know dogs can remember in pictures but can they remember in videos too? Well, we looked at a study that looked at whether dogs could copy a behavior after a delay. So could they recall it in a sequence like a video clip? Eight dogs were taught to copy what a person did using a method called do as I do. But the dogs were made to sit and stay and then they watched a person do something like walking around a cone or jumping on a table or pushing a hanging object. And they used objects that the dogs knew, so they were familiar, and novel ones as well. And they were kept in place while the trainer would run off and hide behind a curtain. It was a good 14 metres away. And then they told the dogs to do it without being seen. So the dogs had to remember and repeat the action after different lengths of time, sometimes up to 10 minutes. And they found dogs were able to repeat both familiar and brand new actions after a delay, even if they got distracted in between. They could imitate actions even when a new person gave them the do it command. So it looks like they can remember and recall in sequences of events, just like a movie clip. The new behaviours are something to think about, but the familiar ones is no surprise because repetition instills behaviour in dogs like it does in, in all of us, doesn't it? Yeah, and uh, with this, with the, the picture side of things as well, I, d I recently put up a video on one of my online programmes where I deliberately took a known command, which was a recall command, and instead just shouted completely random words. Never One was knickers, <laughs> and I think the other one was custard or something like that. Amazing. And on each time, yeah, it was a recall command and a station. So the dog had to stop and lay down at distance. Well, completely out and about, just running around with another dog enjoying themselves. And that command came out, and the dog performed the behaviour. Yeah. Immediately perform the behaviour. They're all listening to the tone, aren't they? It's the context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the picture. I, I, I it's the picture. exactly There's, the same we, as that. We are hell-bent. On, on as as dog owners and as dog trainers as as an industry in basically focusing on the command, focusing on on the signal, we and we miss it. We basically focus on the tree and we miss the woods. We need to look at the entire picture, and yeah. that is the information yeah. that the dog draws in order yeah. to perform the response. So arguably, they might be remembering different yeah. things than we think they're remembering, but they're remembering something nonetheless. But yeah, I yeah. wondered when I, when we were looking at this study whether there are things that we can do to improve a dog's memory. Oh yeah, well, if we can improve, improve our own, I would surmise we can yeah. improve dogs. Have you heard of mind palaces? Um, yeah, I've heard of mind palaces. Of there's a there's a game a, a the world's best. Um, what did, what did you? Oh, he remembers cards and he holds the world record for it. And he there's a there was an interview. He talked about how he does it, and I think yeah. it was that technique. Yeah. Uh, I love mind palaces, so I used to use these a lot, particularly for exams. And so, if you had to remember a shopping list, you would imagine going into your house. You might put the first item on your shop of your shopping list. I don't know in your kitchen or something. If that's the first room that you go into, but you don't just kind of like I don't know, say it's an apple, leave an apple on the side because you forget about that. Make something crazy and stupid about that apple so that it really tells a story and it helps you to remember it. So 
the apple might be a giant apple and someone's got pots and pans from your kitchen and it's like smacking this apple with these pots and pans and it, you kind of go in, you remember that and then you're like, oh yeah, apple, that's what I've got to remember. I struggled to retain knowledge in right the way through school. Obviously, for my age, ADHD, when I diagnose things, so I really struggled paying yeah. attention. I won't go on, you know, around the world, but when I come out the army, I, I learned sign language and was doing that for a living. And what I realised is I kind of stumbled across an ability to retain knowledge because I could, because if I signed it and translated it, it was a picture that yeah. was solid and I never had that before. And so I suppose that's a similar yeah. sort of thing because I'm actually putting pictures to the words. I remember things much more effectively. And that's true. And the crazier and more stupid or random or weird mm. or even rude you can make it, the more likely it is to stick. And it, it's tough for dogs, isn't it? Because you can't go, okay, we're going to... <laughs> you would, you yeah, would. But you can't then kind of say to a dog, hey, this is a technique that you can use. Let's do a doggy mind palace. But yeah. how could you? By what doing you exactly do? what you've just said, but by doing it, you're doing it via mental imagery. But what you're doing, I'm suggesting, is attaching greater emotional significance yeah. to the apple by putting it out of context yeah. in something that your brain is thinking. I'm guessing your brain is thinking that's unusual. Remember that, that's, that's important. Yeah, yeah. So with my dog, if I take something and I think I'm going to generalize this, but make it a little bit different, a little bit beyond what you would expect. So my recall command, for example, gets a far greater reward than you were expecting compared to the single thing that you were getting. So the dog thinks, whoa, hang on, there's emotional significance attached, attached to that. You know, I've got more interaction with her when, when I came back or, you know, when, when, when I jumped into the car that I normally don't get into because my emotional response is to keep away from. But when I got into it, bang, something fantastic happened. You know, I think definitely your, your sort of like applied mind palace, your, yeah. ke your mind kennel, your isn't mind it? It's kennel. like your applied yeah. mind kennel and taking it and putting yeah. it there. Yeah, 100%. 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 
Do dogs remember the last thing they did? Now, I like this study. This ended up being a nature paper. It's really hard to publish in the journal Nature, so only the best studies make it into there. This particular one, they trained 10 dogs to repeat an action they'd just done in their daily life following a specific command. And those actions could vary. It might be having a drink of water from their bowl. It might be lying down somewhere or interacting with an object. The test was done outside the lab in a normal environment. So the dogs weren't expecting a test. It was quite natural. And they found that dogs were able to repeat their own actions, whether it was a learned behavior like down or something more spontaneous like taking a drink of water. They were able to do this after a delay of 20 seconds, of one minute, and some of them even after an hour, which is an amazing thing to do. So the dogs had definitely grasped the concept of repeat my last action, but they also very likely were relying on memory rather than an association. So repeat my last action as in repeat the dog's last action? Yeah. Okay. That's always problematic because the dog will normally go to where the, the, the last the last find was. When if you're teaching search dogs, mm. they find, say you're using cones and they find it in that cone. Or, or gun dogs, you send them over there and that's where they got that. It's a concerted effort to teach them, like, I know you've been there, but we're going there now. And you have to, so how many times when you're teaching your dogs to send away, Jay, if you're putting different things out, they want to go to the last place they found things. Um, so we have to we have to make an effort to to teach them. Though trust me. <laughs> yeah, and that's a really good example of that mem that type of memory and yeah. practice, isn't it? They're remembering where the last thing was that they went to, and mm. they're going back there. So for me, again, that is evidence of dogs remembering Which things is, in yeah. a very similar way to to, to yeah. we do. They remember sequences of of events. They're remembering like a movie clip of something that happened in their brains, yeah. not just a very kind of static link between but something. But there's a feel-good factor as well, isn't it? Because whatever they're remembering, there's a there's a, yeah. an emotion attached to it. They're getting something from yeah. it. I sort of think, if I... Like this morning, we, we came from the hotel to the studio, right? Mm -hmm. um, via the wrong train. Yeah. Via the wrong train. Right, the, emotionally significant, we remember that. <laughs> but yeah. I could, in my... Personally, in my mind, I can visualise that whole journey. What? Why? Why should it be that I can and a dog can't? Why, why, why is that? Why is that even sort of something where we think, oh no, you can't do that? Why not? So why not? I, something, I, I didn't get a reward on know, every step of the journey. Yet I can remember every yeah. step of the journey. I think so our what, company was your own reward. Mm -hmm. That's what probably. It was. We had probably. A we had a conversation. <laughs> Either that, or it was intensively aversive, yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't escape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably trapped. It was emotionally <laughs> significant. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it's about it, uh, maybe it's about ability. Like we were touching this last night, when I, and I asked you, didn't I? I was going down a bit of a rabbit hole, and I said, just because these areas in the brain light up. That doesn't mean that they work like ours. What if they work at a much lower level? So it might just be that if, if, if let's say we're going on the same journey, the same parts of the brain are lighting up, ours is taking in much more information than, than theirs. It might just be or that. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. Or, or vice versa. Yeah. Well, think about a mobile phone, a bit like an output, right? So we're seeing these the outputs of these things, but a mobile phone that you might have had five years ago yeah. might not perform as well as Absolutely. a mobile phone that you'd have today. Yeah. So, and I go even more. could be the same one, with dogs' memories. Go on one further. It differs between people, so of course it's going to with dogs. Sabrina will will memorise far more information than I have, you know, given your, your title and your achievements. And even if it's a, you know, a, let's say a, a gift from God for having intelligence, it's still a practised you know, you know, behavior, you, you, you're doing it more effectively. I, I suppose going back to the example that I gave about the journey, it could be argued that you know to remember a journey because you're in an unfamiliar place and it pays you an uh, evolutionary advantage yeah. to be able to retrace your steps back to a point of known safety, i.e. Yeah. hotel yeah, yeah. room if you needed to, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, good point. But then, so, yeah. but then the dog so, has, has an acute sense of smell, so, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that makes up for... Smell it. its way back to yeah, safety. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good to do. Smap. I like Use this. a smap. A smap, mm -hmm. yeah, I like this. Can you smap us to the listener questions, Jamie? Question one is from Gabby from Jolly's Bottom in Cornwall. Okay, like, basically, if you took your dog out on a walk and you came across one of your dog's siblings that it hadn't seen for years, the Theoretically, could it remember them? And if it could, would they remember their smell or their face? Ooh. The theoretically, I'd say yeah, but if you're talking years, I'd, I'd, I'd say no. I think there's a familiarity thing with this. I think technically with smell, if they still smell the same, very possibly. Their face, personally, I'd say less likely because the face would have changed so much. Even if they do have a, a memory, a recollection back to that point, 
it's very unlikely that the face would be the same. So if you had um, a twin that, for example, that you hadn't seen since you were both one, would you still recognise them in the street when they're 30? If they were not identical. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, yeah, 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 good point. I would be like, oh my God, that <laughs> looks you like look me. <laughs> it's me doppelganger, how the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I just, it's impossible to answer, Gabby. Yeah. It's impossible to answer, isn't it? it is. I, 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 Nothing is impossible. It is impossible to say whether a dog can remember somebody via the, because you could, you could, yeah. there's a thing, I'll tell you what, there's a thing um, that, I, that I saw where um, somebody walked a dog when it was a puppy, then the dog goes ahead uh, and is put into a working life and then a little bit later on the dog comes back to see the people who walked the dog when it was a puppy and the dog's jumping up at the people and the dog is pleased to see the people because the dog remembers the people. The reductionist's fun sponge in me yeah. says, bring in 20 other couples and see when you bring the dog in in the same way, does the dog go and jump up at the other people and yeah. see them if they're fussing the dog in the same way that first people do. So you can't really say for certain, can you? But I, my instinct is to say, why Why wouldn't it? Yeah. Why couldn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If, if it's sort of like, if you smell the same, you look roughly the same, you probably are the same. You know what I mean? Um so yeah, yeah the way that's weird though, it kinda it kinda says to me that you're just walking about and they spot someone like you go, Oh, there's Jamie. And my 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 answer to that would be, well, if you look at like Flint, my Labrador's litter, they all look the same. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So in that in that case, does Flint just see any black Labrador and go, Whoa, brother! You know, <laughs> yeah. do, do you know what I mean? Oh, there's me brother. <laughs> but do they smell the same? Yeah, but she's saying record like Reckon that the way it's weird, they just I kind of get this vision that she's walking around and they've spotted each other. But you can recognise someone. They smell would be they, they, they would definitely be able to identify by smell. I don't know how many years that would last for, but do dogs have a specific odor. It's like a fingerprint, isn't yeah. it? Like, they, when they smell each other, that's why they piss on things. <laughs> yeah. Are they able to remember things from when they were young as well? Because you know we can't remember stuff from when we were babies necessarily. No. So does their memory change over time in the same way ours does? Oh my gosh, I've got so many questions. I want to go and do yeah. an experiment. I think every single study we look into, there's there's scope to take it re a lot further yeah. and get more yeah. information. Yeah. I think there really is. Question two is Gina in Hertfordshire. My senior dog seems to be getting a bit dazed now he's older. It's like he can't remember people anymore. He reacted aggressively to my aunt the other day, who he's known for years. It was like she was a stranger. Is it possible for dogs to lose their memory as they age? Um, I, well, yeah, dog, dogs can get senile. What I would say is your first course of action is to take your dog to the vet because um, there's conditions that can cause random bursts of aggression. Ear infections are a massive one. I've had quite a few clients that when they've, well, they haven't even been clients, they phone me to book in. And I've gone, has this only just happened? And yeah, take your dog to the vets first, ask them to check their ears. And they message me back and gone, oh my God, he had an ear infection, never had it again. Mm. On the other side of things, dogs like us can get a bit senile as they get older. And what I would say is, um, obviously, consult your vet still, but just respect that and, and understand that, okay, the changing as they get older, maybe we have to put a bit a, a bit of a different routine when guests come around now to make sure everyone's safe and your dog's not not startled and, and you know feeling like it needs to defend itself. That's a really good one because the vets can do a dementia assessment evaluation mm. for you on your dog. And there are a couple of things that they'll look out for. One can be disorientation. So the dog might often seem lost and that can be an indication that dementia has set in. They'll look at whether the interactions with people have changed. So just the way that Gina explains here with the dog reacting differently to somebody, they'll look at whether they're sleeping and their wake cycles are different as well. Are they mm. sleeping at different times a day? Are they awake at times they'd usually be asleep? They might saw the house more as well. Um, and they might have differences in their anxiety as well. Yeah. They might be more anxious or less anxious than they were. They can were become more, a lot more sensitive to sound as well. Yeah. 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 Danny, can you remember your final thought? Well, funny enough, <laughs> I had a great final thought, but it seems my memory has let me down. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>